So Descartes' rule of signs is actually a rule that gives us the number of combinations for the possible zeros or solutions to a polynomial. Um, so if we know that a polynomial has like six solutions, it gives us that combination of positive, negative, or imaginary solutions that equal up to that total number of six. So when we're doing this, what's going to happen is we're going to find positive and negative real zeros, and then what's left will find the imaginary. So the number of positive real zeros is equal to the number of changes in the sign of the coefficient, or is less than this by an even number. And the same goes for your negative real zeros. So what's going to happen is we're going to find the number of sign changes, and then it's going to be that number, or that number less than that by an even number. So it sounds kind of confusing, so let's try an example. Um, so number 4, x to the 6th minus 2x to the 5th plus 3x to the 4th minus 10x cubed minus 6x squared minus 8x minus 8. Um, it is your polynomial. So it is a degree of 6. So we know that it should have a total of 6 solutions. But we want to figure out what those combinations of solutions could be. So this is your positive X. That's what it starts you off with. So what we do is count the number of times the sign changes from either positive to negative or negative to positive between each of your terms. So it starts out with a positive x to the sixth. So right off the bat, it changes from here to here. It changes from positive to negative. Now, it changes again because unless it stays negative, that means it's changed. So then it changes again from negative to positive, then again from positive to negative, and then it actually stays negative the rest of the time. So there are one, two, three sign changes. So three sign changes means that for your positive zeros, because this is a positive x plugged into your polynomial here, we could have three or 2 less than that because 2 is an even number. So we could have 3 or 1 positive zeros or solutions. You can't go, you can't keep subtracting 2. So you can't say like 3 or 1 or negative 1 because negative 1 isn't an option. But say you would have had 5 sign changes, then you would have had five or three or one positive zeros. It's that number of sign changes and then any option less than that by an even number. So you just kind of subtract two, intervals of two. So then we have to find the number of possible negative zeros. So what we do is plug in a negative x into our equation. So what happens is anything with an odd exponent is actually going to change signs. Anything with an even exponent will stay. The reason that is is because we don't care what negative number we're plugging in, but say we plug in negative 1 negative 1 to the fourth negative times a negative is a positive 1 so you'd end up with 1 times 1 which is positive 1 so the only time your sign changes is if you have an odd number of negatives so your 2x to the fifth your 10x cubed and your 8x to the first those all have odd powers so those are going to be the signs that change. So you'll end up with plus 2x to the 5th, plus 10x cubed, and plus 8x. So x to the 6th, now plus 2x to the 5th. Your x to the 4th stays. Your 10x cubed is now plus 
x squared stays minus, and your 8x is now positive. That last term, if there's no x term with it, it just stays that minus 8. So now you chain or count the number of sign changes when you have a negative x plugged into your polynomial. So it starts out positive and then doesn't actually change until you get to the 10 and the negative 6. So right there it changes and then changes again from negative to positive and then positive to negative. So this would also be 3 or 1. Negative zeros. Say you only had one sign change. Um, it is possible for that to be the case. So if you only had one sign change, then you would just have like one negative zero. Okay, so when we're filling this out, we said that because the degree of our polynomial is six, the total number of solutions our polynomial should have is six. So I know that that's what the total is. So if you're looking at this, I just sort of start with the first number in your positives and then match it with both of the negatives. So two possibilities could be three positive and three negative or three positive and one negative. Then your second or your other options would be one positive and three negative or one positive and one negative. So how do we fill out the imaginary column? Well, if your first option would be three positive solutions and three negative solutions, if we have a total of six, then that would mean that combination wouldn't have any imaginary solutions. So what about the second one? Three positive and one negative would give us four solutions. If we need six, that would leave us with two imaginary. Positive and negative, one positive, three negative. Again, two imaginary to equal six. And then positive one, negative one would leave us with four imaginary solutions. So we don't always have to use all of our boxes, so don't be alarmed if you have more boxes than combinations. But I do want you guys to know is that your imaginary values should always come in pairs. So you should never have like one imaginary solution or three possible imaginary solutions because imaginaries always come in those conjugate pairs. So if you have 2i as a possible solution, then you should have negative 2i. So you never should have an odd number there. It should always be pairs. So what Descartes' rules really tells us is the possible combination of types of solution you can have to a polynomial. So it doesn't tell you what they are, but it limits or narrows down the scope and says, okay, well, one of your possible combinations could be three positive and one negative and two imaginary solutions. Or you could just have three of each, three positive and three negative. It gives you the combinations of the types of solution you have. So why don't you guys try that other one? I don't want to do them both. So try 2x to the 6 minus 3x squared minus x plus 1.